blue, green was corn. I was to my work then low, fences mending Please rise. <laughs> Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Laverne, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. All who are baptized into Christ to put on Christ. In her baptism, Laverne was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, she would be clothed in glory. And now we will have amazing grace. Please, if you know the words, please join in. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound and Christ. 
so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. <coughs> and we will now have the reading of the lesson. And I have a reading from Psalms 103. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I may never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how, we, how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wildfires we bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone, as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children. Now would you please rise as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Let us pray. O God of hope and giver of comfort, your days are without end, and your mercies cannot be counted. We give you thanks for the days of earthly life that you granted to your soul the birth, who has finished a course on earth and now rests from her labors. Make us aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life, and let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness all the days of our lives, so that we, with all who have died in the true faith, may have perfect fulfillment and joy in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. To the family and friends of Laverne, grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ninety-six years of a life well lived, a life filled with daily adventures, opportunities, a life filled with twists and turns, ups and downs, 
with journeys across the plains, across the state lines, through the valleys, and over the mountaintops of daily life, all with the assurance that God was with the Laverne to lead her and guide her every step of the way. But yet there is so much more, so many more details of Laverne's life to share, so many wonderful and precious stories to tell, memories to share with Laverne by all who called her sister, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, and most importantly, friend. But we can't get it in all the stories and memories today, because how do we adequately tell the whole life story of the bird in just a few minutes? We can't, because we gathered this day, not to remember just a moment in Laverne's lifetime, but to reflect on her lifetime in a single day. And so each person gathered here today holds a special memory of the bird, and as the old gospel hymn goes, precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul, in the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. 96 years of life, and as I was looking through Daryl's notes that I have, I noticed that he died in 2019 at the age of 96. Now, I'm not going to go into any, into any outlandish thing about the possibility of there being any significance with numbers, because it doesn't matter. And sometimes no explanation is warranted or needed. It's simply the way things are. Memories of Laverne. Some family members sent me their memories of the bird, and there was one reoccurring memory, that, <clears throat> and that was of her cooking and baking. The cookies, the buns, the mac and cheese, potato salad, rice krispie bars, and many other grand delicacies that only mom or grandma can make. And it is curious that many children try to replicate their mother's cooking, and some even call their mother every, every year to get the same recipe, I'm not going to mention who it was. They will use the same ingredients, same methods, same everything, or so we think. But it never turns out exactly the same, and we wonder why. I have pondered over that for years, and it finally came to me one day as, as I was presiding over a dear, very dear neighbor of mine's funeral, and it hit me. I know the secret ingredient that she used when she cooked or baked. It was love. Now, love was never written on the recipe card as an ingredient, but then it didn't have to be. It should have been that common sense ingredient that makes everything, even cream cucumbers, taste better. And if you'll notice, I don't like cream cucumbers. <laughs> Plain. Laverne did everything with love in her heart, whether it was cooking or baking, taking a walk in the spring to see that first flower of the year, or hear the sound of the mountain bluebird announcing that spring is sprung, or to take that horseback ride across the prairie to school or just for enjoyment to witness and visualize the vastness and wonder and beauty of God's created universe. Faith in God was evident in Laverne's life. Her faith guided her life and brought her hope and comfort and gave her the strength and courage and abilities to do all that she did and accomplish. Laverne met challenges head on. She stepped into whatever, whatever role was needed and she proclaimed the love of God to all, all whom she encountered through her acts and actions and she used words when necessary. Laverne enjoyed her life and lived every day to the fullest. She made the most out of every opportunity and took nothing for granted and accepted every day as a gift, a gift from God. And today we gather as brothers and sisters, as one within the body of Christ, to mourn the loss of Laverne. But more importantly, we are here to celebrate her life, to give thanks to God that she was a part of our lives and that she made a difference not only in our lives, but in the life of the world around us as well. Laverne has left a legacy, a legacy of life lessons, to meet every challenge with quiet determination, to not be jealous of others, to carry no malice, to be gentle, generous, and to be kind of heart and have a loving soul. Today, as we gather under this shadow of darkness and death, we search for that ray of light that gives us hope and assurance. And we find that assurance in the words that Jesus spoke, I am the light of the world. I'm the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. These words give us hope. These are words that assure us of the promise of abundant life, not only in this world, but also the hope and the life of the world yet to come. And so in Christ, we go forth in hope and confidence that just as death was not the last word for Jesus Christ, it is not the last word for us today. The death of Laverne brings tears to our eyes and emptiness to our hearts. Yet in time, our empty emptiness is soon filled with the unconditional love of God, a love that knows no boundaries or limitations, a love that knows no end. 
We grieve the passing of Laver, but we rejoice with unceasing joy that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are freed from the sting of death and brought into the hope and certainty of eternal and everlasting life. From the words of 2 Timothy, As for me, I am being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Laverne fought the good fight, she kept the faith, and now she has traded in her old rugged cross for a crown, and is walking hand in hand with God, enjoying her new journey of eternal and everlasting life. Rest in peace, Laverne, and as you begin your new journey of eternal and everlasting life, may the road rise up to meet you. May the light of Christ shine warm upon your face. And may God, now and always, hold you firmly in the palm of his hand. Amen. And I now invite Shannon to come forward. special woman. I have countless me good memories of her to share. First, I would like to talk about the great person that she was throughout her life. She was a friend, daughter, sister, wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and for a couple of weeks she was a great-great-grandmother to my grandson Quentin, who unfortunately did not get to meet her. She was very good at all her roles during her lifetime. Grandma was the most kind, giving, patient, caring, thoughtful, and loving person I have ever known. Dad. Grandma Laverne loved animals, especially horses. I remember her telling stories about riding horses with her friends. At the time, she was a kid living on the farm along the Mouse River north of Tolly. It always seemed to me that these were some of her favorite memories in her lifetime. Yeah. She had such a positive glow when talking about riding her horse. Grandma and her family moved around quite a bit after they left the farm. She went to many schools throughout her childhood and teenage years, which must have been very difficult for her. However, she made countless close friendships over the years. Grandma Laverne was always more than busy through the years. She spent most of her adult life being a homemaker and doing all the things needed to make daily life as good as it could be for everyone in her home. From parenting and housework to cooking and baking to many other tasks she needed to accomplish in order to keep everyone happy and healthy, she was never at a loss for things to do. <coughs> Grandma worked as hard as anyone through the years. She even raised chickens to help support her family of seven. I have been told stories of Grandma Laverne having an open door policy for all her children's friends while they were growing up sometimes feeding many extra kids on a regular basis. <coughs> she also did this for my siblings and me, who brought our friends around to her place more than occasionally. Sometimes we would hang out at Grandma's house after school on game nights and on weekends if we were in town. Grandma also took my friends and me in overnight when there were bad snowstorms and we couldn't make it home. She was truly kind and welcoming, not only to family, but to friends and neighbors as well. Because of this, I think most people saw Grandma as a sweet lady that was very friendly and caring toward everyone. Grandma Laverne never missed a birthday or special occasion, and over the years there grew to be a lot of them. She would always be there with a nice card or special gift and caring words. She tried to be present and supportive for everyone no matter the occasion. <clears throat> Grandma Laverne was a wonderful host at all the countless family gatherings over the years. Doing much of the work herself and never a complaint about anything, she was just happy to unite the family for a meal and some quality time spent together. 
Grandma Laverne cared a lot about all of us and in turn worried a lot about us on occasion. It was just her nature. She was always concerned about what others were going through and willing to lend a hand or an ear. Grandma was always a great listener. If you had a hard question or were going through a hard time, <clears throat> she would try to be very empathetic and try her best to hear you out and help however she could. We always knew how Grandma felt about us. She was quick with a heartfelt hug and an I love you and always put others ahead of herself. Grandma spent most of her time through the years doing things for family members, friends, and members of the community. I think that doing these things generally brought her joy. Grandma Laverne liked to gamble from time to time. <laughs> she loved her bingo, usually played at Tolly City Hall, Wes's Bar, or Sid's Bar. In she also loved occasional trips to the casino to play the slot machine. I saw her face light up with joy many times after winning a jackpot at the casino. We would always hear about it when she won a good one. Grandma also loved going out dancing with Grandpa. They spent many Friday and Saturday nights dancing either at Green Hill Bar or Mouse River Park Bar. Grandma really enjoyed watching all the Triple Crown horse races and loved trying to pick out the best horse. She also appreciated the beauty of nature and liked to watch the songbirds among the trees and flowers in the backyard. Grandma loved flowers and always had many plants and flower bouquets in the house. She also enjoyed reading a good novel or watching the baseball game on TV with Grandpa. Grandma liked a good game of pinochle as well. <clears throat> it was not uncommon for her to have three card tables going during a family gathering. Grandma Laverne was always a caring and devoted family member. I remember when <clears throat> her parents were in their twilight years, she did a lot to help care for them. Also, when Grandpa Darrell was having health issues in his later years, she tended to his every need and was strong by his side for him to the very end. <clears throat> Grandma kept close with her siblings and all her children through the years, visiting regularly in person or on the phone. Grandma really liked to talk on the phone. And in more recent years, she was even able to manage her own smartphone with a little help from some family members. <laughs> Grandma Laverne was very involved in raising me throughout my childhood and was a great influence on me. I grew up just a half a mile down the road from Grandma's house on the farm and 10 miles from her house in Tolly. I spent a lot of time with her and Grandpa year-round. When I was four years old, Grandma had knee surgery and was on crutches. I can remember her coming outside on crutches to pitch me baseball so that I could practice my batting. This is one example showing the selfless devotion to family that Grandma gave to all of us. She, was above, and she went above and beyond for us in many ways. She had great character and was someone for us to look up to and learn from through the years. I remember countless meals over the years eaten at her table. She was a very good cook. Grandma's meals were always delicious. She put in a lot of work going the extra mile to make everything just right. Swedish meatballs with mashed potatoes and gravy were my favorite. Her chocolate chip cookies were truly something special. I think that Grandma put a little extra love and care into all her dishes and desserts, many of which were delivered to the field by her during the spring and fall work times of the year. My siblings and I spent many overnight stays with the grandparents, and Grandma always made it so much fun for us. We always loved going to Grandma's house. She attended many ball games and other school functions as she was able to over the years, not only for her own children, but for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren too. My kids have been fortunate enough to have close relationships with Grandma as well, which has been a true blessing for me and for them. She was a great influence on all of us. Grandma Lori did a lot of special things for many people throughout her life. I remember her going above and beyond for my siblings. She would always try to include us in things such as trips to family members, trips to see family members, and doing activities with us. She would buy us little toys, trinkets, or candy from time to time. Grandma did so many little things to make family holidays fun for the kids at the time. From special food items to decorations in the house and to special gifts for all the children, she really went all out to make little ones feel special. 
She always took the extra burden upon herself to take my sister and me along to Tali when she would host bingo at the city hall in the summertime. She truly did more than she had to for us, and I am forever grateful for all the things she did for us and all the things she taught us. <coughs> the more recent fond memory that I love of Grandma Laverne happened last summer on a road trip. We were up at Grano Cemetery for a family member's burial ceremony. Grandma in recent months had a lot of memory issues and was tired out for most of her days. This particular day, however, she was wide awake, alert, and enjoying the day, even though it was for a sad occasion. After the ceremony, we traveled to Lansford for lunch and then on to McKinney Cemetery to visit Grandpa's gravesite. She did well with all those things. Next, just Grandma and I loaded up in the vehicle to make our way back down the long road home to Bismarck. I thought for sure that she would be taking a long nap on the drive. To my surprise, it was just the opposite. She was awake, alert, and talking the entire trip home. We talked about all kinds of things, past, present, and future. She was so full of life that day and had such a good time. I feel privileged to have spent that afternoon driving and visiting with her. I will never forget it. I was very fortunate to be able to maintain a close relationship with Grandma Laverne for all of my life. Even during the last years of her life, while she had many ailments, aches, and pains, rarely did you ever hear her complain about anything. Given all her hardships growing up and, all, and her difficult times through the years, she continually tried to, life, to make life better for all her family than it was for her. Grandma was probably the most righteous and genuine, genuine person that I have ever known in my life. She gave us all a great example of how to be a good human being. Grandma Vern was one of the most influential people for me throughout my entire life. Having her in my life as I have, especially as a child, has been a big part of me becoming the person that I am today. I miss her very much and will always carry my good memories of her in my heart. I know that she can hold Grandpa Daryl's hand again. We love you, Grandma. See you later. congregation to please rise. God has made us as people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed before you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and has seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life of the last year. After each prayer petition, I invite the congregation to respond with, Hear our prayer. Let us pray. <laughs> you have your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Give to your whole church and heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to the newness of life, and that through the grave and the gate of death, we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have the strength to make, meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Lord, in your mercy. Ah, ah, 
Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us grace to trust the to your never-failing love, which will stand here in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, and remember her according to the favor of the heir of your people. Lord, in your mercy, God of all grace, who sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks, because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we command your servant of earth. I acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Amen. And now, may the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God, God go with us now and forever. And may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord to make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. Amen. <laughs> Day as beautiful as this, it's not too difficult to imagine Laverne, Grandma Laverne, greeting the, greeting the day, and uh, the day greeting her with a soft breeze against her cheek, heating up throughout the day, and then in the evening, cooling down and bidding farewell. <laughs> Peace. 
sun It's burning me And I'm feeling A little weary now Red tail hawk Wants to play Clouds black wake seagull comes to claim her tail. This old scow plows a prairie sea. Stars dim in heavenly moon arising over the hill. Evening's quilt falls on me. And 
the cats, coats hung in the hall. She hears all the aunts and the uncles who help with the harvest every fall. Was it real as it seemed? An old Dakota dream. Wheat fields and rainbows drifted in an old Dakota dream. An old Dakota dream. Wait, spy. As it seemed, an old Dakota dream. Wheat fields and rainbows drifting in an old Dakota dream. An old Dakota dream. Wheat fields and rainbows.